Ja, hej och välkomna till Accelerator allesammans. Jag heter Rika Julin och jag är konstnärlig ledare för Accelerator. Vi ses här alla med anledning av utställningen Experimentalfältet som finns här en trappa ner. Den går att se efter det här eventet också under en stund ikväll. Den här utställningen har jag ställt samman med min kollega Therese Kjellner som är intendent här på Accelerator. Namnet Experimentalfältet det var en plats här på Frescati där Accelerator finns som grundades 1816. Och det är, skulle man kunna snabbt sammanfatta det som det moderna jordbrukets födelseplats både i Sverige och internationellt. Eh, Therese och jag har bjudit in åtta samtida konstnärer till den här utställningen och det är Accelerators första grupputställning. De här konstnärerna vi har bjudit in eh, är intresserade av människors relation till andra arter. Också vår relation till naturen, till skogen. Eh, en annan fokus är relationen mellan stad och landsbygd. Men sen har vi också tyckt att det är spännande att lyfta experimenterande som en grundförutsättning för skapande i stort. Eh, så det är något som egentligen alla konstnärer i utställningen har gemensamt. Och eh, Signe Johannesen som är huvudpersonen här ikväll. Konstnär, en av de åtta som är med i utställningen. Hon visar hittills två verk i utställningen. Eh, ikväll kommer vi då se ett tredje verk. Ett av de verken heter Puppy Play, Puppy Play och det kan man se i trappen här på vägen ner. Och sen är det installationen Posthumous Dialog som är startpunkten för den här filmen som vi ska strax se. Och ikväll är det ju premiär för eh, Signes nya film Swamp Posthumous eh, som är en samproduktion mellan Kullberg och Accelerator. Och i det här verket förenas Signe med forskaren Kristina Fredengren som är här ikväll också. Hon är docent vid institutionen för arkeologi och antikens kultur här på Stockholms universitet. Och sen är det tre av Kullbergs dansare med i filmen. Agnieszka Sjökvist Dlugoshevska, Ester Zedulas och Un Faleide. Och de förenas tillsammans i ett intresse för hybrida kroppar, historiska homskrivningar och människans relation till djur. Och med start imorgon så kommer den här filmen då vara del av utställningen Experimentalt fältet. Och utställningen visas till den 19 september. Så att eh, ni som då tittar på det här och kanske inte är här utan hemma eh, har möjlighet då att komma hit innan den 19 september och se både verket och eh, hela utställningen. Eh, efter den här visningen som börjar alldeles strax så kommer jag föra ett samtal med Signe, Kristina och Agnieszka eh, om det här verket och dess ursprung. Och det här samtalet kommer ske på engelska. Nu kommer vi strax eh, mörklägga här och visa filmen. Filmen visas även live på Facebook. Och bara nu, den kommer inte ligga kvar där utan annars får man komma hit och se på den. Och den är 18 minuter lång. Så eh, vi ses strax igen. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, I will uh, briefly introduce the panel again, but in English. Uh, this is Signe Johannesen, the artist behind the film tonight. And Kristina Fredengren, researcher here at the Stockholm University. And then we have Agnieszka Sjökvist Glugoshevska from Kullberg, yeah. dancer. Hello. And uh, we're going to talk for roughly 30 minutes. And uh, after that, uh, you're all welcome to stay. And uh, we have, uh, we're open another hour, so you can also see the exhibition. So I think I'll uh, start uh, with a question to you, Signa. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, but in Swedish, you have until now two artworks in the exhibition, the experimental field. Puppy Play and Posthumous Dialogue. And starting tomorrow, this film will also be part of the exhibition. Uh, this has been a rather long process. Uh, I mean, this exhibition has actually been up for 
over a year due mm. to reasons that we all know about. So you've worked uh, a lot uh, around posthumous dialogue. Could you tell us a little bit about where you started, perhaps after the invitation that you got to be part of yes. the show? Yes. Well, um, it actually all started because I was... Uh, uh, when I got the question from you, I was in the middle of, of doing a research at SLU uh, in their archives, which also, um, uh, you know, uh, resulted in a trophy, the separate exhibition that I had at Ystad Konstmuseum. But I couldn't really leave it at that. So when you guys explained to me the concept uh, around the experimental field, I went back to the kind of... Um, uh, the emotional uh, response that I had when I uh, went into the archive of SLU. Because when I came there, um, there was this rooms full of like uh, piles and piles of uh, bones, uh, remnants from bodies that ha have been in different part of his uh, parts of history. Some of them were called pedagogical material and dated back to like more than a hundred years old. And some of them were very new and you could still kind of smell this kind of different, uh, like in every archive you can kind of like smell that there is like different times resting there together. And I, I had this uh, response to these bones and I wanted to, like, uh, to tribute uh, my relationships to these domesticized animals that was in this archive, which was mainly horses and cows, but also like sheep and dogs and all the kind of animals that we are surrounding ourselves with throughout history. And so I started kind of, uh, you know, talking to my peers and colleagues and ended up in this kind of uh, deep uh, curi curiosity with the cow. <laughs> That's how it all started. Um, you know, uh, in our, like, or like the mythology that is uh, one of the, the ones that are here, which is the Nordic mythology, uh, we all stem from this mother cow called Odhumla. And uh, she kind of lactates out the, the watery parts of the world and, and kind of breastfeeds these two giants that becomes the different uh, uh, geographical parts of the world. And I started thinking about that, and I wanted to kind of tribute this mother cow somehow. And so I started off with thinking about like a vaca mom, or like, also this was when COVID hit. And it was so clear to me that, for example, the vaccine, which comes from a teat of a cow, basically, uh, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was something to think about, to kind of us as suckling calves, or like, what does it really mean to be such a hungry little baby calf throughout history? And the, and the name, I mean, uh, yeah. also, uh, Vaka. Vaka, precis. And it was exactly in this kind of research that suddenly I met you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I had all these uh, parts that I had casted because I started off with this caring action of casting these body parts from the archive. Uh, and I couldn't really stop myself. So it became all, but it's like a manic kind of, uh, yeah, manic doing. Uh, and uh, then you stepped into my studio. I did, <laughs> yes. <laughs> For a whole other reason. Mm. But then actually, so I would say that the work that you see today in uh, the experimental field is very much uh, affected by my meeting with Christina Fredengren because I had this uh, feeling of like tributing our relationship to the domestication, like the circle which it is also in the installation, like this circle of domesticized animals that we have walked through history with somehow. But when you stepped into my studio, you kind of directed my gaze upon that I was much closer to this, this circle than I ha even could imagine, because you pointed my, me in the direction of this certain archaeological find that was made in Örebro 1949. Uh, so, and there it was. The whole relationship that I w had, you know, had this need to kind of address was in that find. And so in our dialogue, you know, it took that turn. Mm. Mm. Katina, could you tell us a little bit about that 
find that specific? Uh, I will certainly do that mm -hmm. because I experienced a, a kind of similar thing when we met in your studio making a video for something completely different that something extremely kind of energetic kind of happened right there and then uh, and I was inspired by your kind of boon chandelier and your bones that you had kind of made crosses on, fingerprints on, uh, looking at these finds as when they were kind of handled. Uh, but the find itself that I told you about was something that had um, taken a place kind of in the early stages of my Water of the Times project that deals with human and animal sacrifice and the deposition of bodies in bogs, waterways, etc. that talks about the relationships with water, for example. But there was one find that I couldn't really make use of <laughs> because I had from the beginning thought that it could theoretically be a hybrid body that had been left in the wetlands as a bog body. Um, and this find then consisted of various kind of species parts. But when uh, me and my osteologist Camilla Lövqvist uh, were trying to radiocarbon date these ones, they kind of came in at different times. So it wasn't a kind of temporally consistent body, and hence it kind of fell out of our kind of archaeological narratives. And I went, oh, that, that's a pity, we tested it, but um, sure enough, we'll work on with kind of other things. And then <laughs> when I saw that you, when, when I told you about this find, <laughs> associating to your art, you were going like, oh, <laughs> wow, because that's exactly a squadron, <laughs> kind of. So um, that's where it happened, because mm. when you kind of, you kind of uh, pointed out from your profession, what you kind of read in to uh, the parts that was in my studio, uh, I found like the uh, not maybe like the mystery uh, of this find, but actually like the questions that kind of hovered out of you know this kind of un undefinable uh, narrative, and I I really felt that uh, you know the non the question became like more important for me than actually finding like the correct answer like we we live in a society which are obsessed by like measurability and uh, you know effectivity and uh, facts and look where it has taken us so in a way uh, i kind of felt that this hybrid body that you kind of directed me towards was almost like helping me to kind of uh, yeah find a way to attribute the opposite of this effectivity or the opposite of this uh, this uh, need for quick fixes uh, need for like uh, yeah our we have like such a short attention span we can't take decisions that are more long term than our next paycheck for example so it's like this this body you know. Uh, so became a way for me to think about like slow uh, time like s um, sediments and also so that's why there's like a, the start of this investigation is in in this installation so I didn't know how to go about it so I just started to make a scene and then I invited you to come uh, to see you know what, what would happen what would happen if I made a stage for you to address mm. And during that time, I got this invitation by Kulbay uh, and, and the project that I was involved in there. And I met uh, Un and Agnieszka and Esther. And I just actually also invited them into this find. And, you know, it's like, okay, let's, you know, investigate this together. Yeah. What, what knowledge rests in this undefinable find? So that's how it started. Mm -hmm. I think for us as an institution, it's been a, a very, very exciting kind of ride to be with you because you started to talk about SLU, Statens Lantbruksuniversitet, mm -hmm. which is actually development out of uh, uh, what came out of Experimentalfältet here. And uh, you'd spoken a lot about cows and we were so happy that you were <laughs> invested in the cow. We thought that the vaccination, it's, it's all so perfect. But then uh, I think very shortly after this, epiphany appeared in your studio you called uh, Therese and myself and you would not stop talking about this find so it was uh, very exciting but we didn't know what the hell was going on actually 
no, neither do we. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But uh, in the end, it felt very, very good because to embrace the irrational uh, that you have been talking a lot about has been very, very exciting to us as well. So it's been a, a, quite a, a ride and, and something to learn for us as well. But I want to, Christina, for you as a researcher, how how has this, uh, how does this, uh, I don't know if I want to say the word help you, but what happens? What happens with, with your the, research? With my research, uh, yes, I think sort of both the meeting and the kind of energy that kind of came in it uh, was of great importance for kind of opening up this kind of case again, but also in formulating and trying to kind of attend to this temporal hybridity that was a kind of concept that came out of this artistic joint <laughs> exploration of a find that had just kind of fallen to the wayside in in uh, my academic writings. So I think sort of that was one uh, part of it. And then there is another kind of part of it that came in through your kind of dancing. And this is kind of try, trying to kind of figure out the kind of physical movement of such a kind of disjointed body. Mm. And also for me, it untold about, it, it kind of started for me to kind of uh, do an explorations of ability, disability, disjointedness, jointedness. Uh, so that was another kind of part of it. And I also think of your art display, this thing that it is actually a tribute to all these kind of multi-species uh, dead and living bodies. Mm. And I was thinking about that also here uh, in this uh, video piece, that the three, the three bits are kind of linking together on uh, a kind of meditation on life, that boundaries with the kind of dead bodies. Uh, you picked out a piece I was reading there uh, that where I said I was referring to something in the early hours of the morning. And I was actually just recalling that in Ireland, where I, I worked a lot, that is how you start the death notices that mm-hmm. you read on radio every day. So that kind of gave me another kind of uh, reference to this kind of life that how is it to live uh, a body like that, um, etc. Mm-hmm. So it has opened up several different kind of research questions that I have kind of taken into further kind of writings on, on uh, this material, besides giving lots of kind of energy in, 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 in uh, addressing, continuing to address this material. And I just want to also point out that uh, our great teacher and friend, The Swamp, cannot yeah. be here today. Mm. But like this is also where we are uh, joined in like some kind of love relationship, but also like, uh, yeah, like uh, a pedagogical relationship, I would mm. say. Like both me and um, Christina, we actually, uh, you know, you know, have this uh, uh, awe for the swamp as this kind of place where these mysteries can't be answered, you know, that there is like, the, like a non-linear time archive that, that rests in this uh, gooey ooze. That that can only be there, and like the so like this is also why we wanted to kind of go back. So like this hybrid, you know, I, I just wanted to point that out that we have to kind of like address that you know the 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 you know the habitat of these finds, mm-hmm. uh, which are the wetland. Mm. And also this thing that one can't, one, I think we share this, we can't get over these places. It's, it's, um, there, there is something very kind of special with them. Mm. And I saw that also addressed in the film uh, at the end when, when you were kind of keep, you were kind of like keepers mm. uh, of these kind of wetlands. And I think from a kind of maybe museum's point of view, the fineness of being the keeper uh, of a particular find, uh, and it's, a more kind of maybe ancient way of talking about antiquarians, etc., being the honorable keeper of the Cross of Kong, for example, being the keeper of etc. Mm. So I, I sort of felt that you, you, we are kind of together <laughs> that type of keepers. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Signe, uh, could you say something more about uh, the Kullberg co- collaboration? How did that come about? Well, when we get into the dancers. Yeah, uh, it experiences. Came, it uh, it was like uh, an, another one of those like uh, magic uh, wands that just came down on me, and and I was like blessed with this invitation to go into some kind of uh, 
I would say non-production, because at least that's how we thought about it. Like we tried to resist kind of, oh, let's make this grand production. Let's just explore something for a year together. So it was uh, the project uh, frame of this was uh, Explorations of Now, which was a project uh, involving other artists as well, invited artists and collaborations uh, that just ended. So it was, uh, and I gave, I came about with it. My first question was like, who wants to try to, you know, get suckled by a calf? That was my first invitations to the dancers. Can you feel how hungry this little calf is? Like. And suddenly, I, some dancers were more curious than others. <laughs> A lot <laughs> fell away and wanted to do something else. But, but the best, the, like, I, I couldn't be more happy with, with the, the, the three dancers that really so curiously and open-minded dived into the unknown <laughs> with me. Uh, yes, so that's it. And uh, Agnieszka, how has this been for you as a dancer, this uh, experience, the process to work with singing and how did it start for you? Besides that it's been wonderful and it's, I feel like it's still ongoing. <laughs> it's been a very unique collaboration, not something that I'm used to. Uh, the main thing that I thought now afterwards was that what also Zygna somehow mentioned, that we didn't have to know the ending by the beginning mm. and during the process. And there's been many elements. I, in this collaboration, I appreciated that we got to ask questions. Collaborative uh, choreographic situation emerged through the uh, human body, through the wetland, through uh, female body through the mothers or mothers to be, as you can see in the artwork. Uh, Un is uh, nine months pregnant. Uh, through embodying uh, animals and through being a hybrid body. So, and the very important element, which you already mentioned, was the soft resistance. Mm -hmm. and on production mode of the swamp mm. that we try to keep and uh, th with us throughout the uh, the whole collaboration, the whole process. It's really been like a wrestling. Like yes, uh, I kind of uh, uh, suggest the question, then you suggest one back, and then like we have been contacting researchers and and people that we really wanted to talk to, and so it's been like a really like a study group in a way. Yeah. <laughs> and we had the reading circle and read some of the books that, for example, uh, me and uh, my dear collaborator, Caroline Malmström, that, uh, have read together. And so it's be, it was really um, just like, you know, going deeper and deeper into yeah. like some core non-linear questions. Yes. Uh, and something maybe that is not classifiable, not nameable, mm. like... I perceived naming as a contra-intuitive, mm. and this work felt very intuitive. Mm. That's a, I take that as a great compliment, actually. <laughs> like, if we could stay with that. And uh, on that note, I just want to say that this, in a way, is uh, very related to the film Puppy Play that is in the stairs, because I felt when we went about it, also like when I met Christina, I felt that I was suddenly like put in this hypnagogue state like in between awake or sleeping uh, that I remember from uh, like for example when I was a little child and playing or like talking to my horse for example I have like such vivid memories of like deep deep like uh, language based uh, uh, long conversations with my horse and that kind of state uh, which is uh, also like uh, reminded by my, my my children, you know, they can just suddenly, it's like it's almost like a psychotic state. But they can suddenly be a, a dragon with a with a you know pet bear. It's completely normal. It takes exactly like one second, and they are there. And I find that's how how can I access that huge knowledge? Like uh, I I really feel that is my uh, highest goal. <laughs> 
as a human being and as an artist. And, and that's, I think we have been working with that throughout yeah. this process to access that kind of... I was just going to ask about that. So I, I imagine that hypnagogue state has been something that you then... Mm. One of many things that you discussed, I suppose. And uh, discussed, maybe not also, but also like done. Mm. We have done hypnagogue states, I would yes. say. Like uh, p put ourselves in that position not knowing where we were heading, like just, uh, you know, uh, everything from when we did the lullabies on the yes. roof here, we had like a lullaby session, which was like a, uh, like a re rehearsal session or maybe to this play in the swamp here. Yeah. We just, you know, tried out to, to lullaby each other and see what would come out of it. And so it's more like, I think that it's like responses, questions, and like more question, where does it take us? Where does it take us? And I think we're all a bit, uh, uh, yeah, curious about <laughs> where it took us. But, uh, you know, that's why also Agnieszka is saying, I, w I think we're still there. It could yeah. go on like, uh, this, like a weak gubbe that never stops, mm. you know? I think it's a really important thing to think about uh, during a time where we've uh, experienced... Uh, a society or certain people who really want very clear answers to what mm. researchers do and to be open to this open-ended uh, situation and perhaps to be able to accept uh, that uh, it sometimes is more or nicer or whatever the w right word would be to, to stay in a, in a state of not knowing, mm. to actually embrace the irrational and not to be fearful. Uh, I think that's been something that has popped up uh, several times during the experimental field. Mm. The, the the bravery that is needed to actually experiment, but <laughs> also uh, that you cannot live without the experimentation. Mm. And it seems that you've embraced that together uh, a lot. And I and I wonder, Agnes, because you're here, you're rep representing the three of you, so to speak. Yeah. And I'm sure you've had different uh, experiences. Yes. How how. Can you say something about that? How, how has that played out for the three of you? I took something with me um, that I feel like I'm experiencing every day. And it's, that's exactly what you said, that actually asking the question is equally valid as trying to find the answers or trying to uh, make a product or trying to present something. And I have to say, I think a lot about her, the mm. finding, mm -hmm. and I think a lot about Swamp through the female body, female situation, and through also different ages of, the, mm. of her body parts. And those women were usually found in the swamps, and there are different storytells. For example, I come from Poland. This meant if there was a female body found in the swamp, something violent have happened to her. There's another part that I connect. You mentioned uh, the death in the, in the artwork. And sometimes I thought about it as dances for the dead. Mm. This is. And I think it's very, I say, speaking for itself that we are uh, very busy planning the future of this collaboration. <laughs> All of us like talking about how we can, you know, continue uh, ways of like staying with this difficult state because it's about that. It's about not escaping to an easy answer. It's about staying with uh, the uncomfortable, uh, smelly, gooey, undefinable, uh, you know, the, you know, the leg that won't f follow the rest of the body in a way. And, and yeah, there could possibly sort of add this thing also research wise, um, as all of us have kind of touched upon this thing of actually trying to get to know these kind of very disjointed pieces dealing with the dead, bringing the dead kind of with us. And I wanted to kind of co reflect on, on the kind of idea of keeper is also kind of sharer. Mm. Um, and I think that that has also been a part of, of this process and artwork. Uh, a really kind of generous kind of sharing in between uh, various experiences and, and fields. Mm. Um, 
but also kind of for archaeology, if I kind of track us back to, to that research field, this thing of that we doesn't we don't really need to kind of fit ourselves into the Bronze Ages, Iron Ages, etc., as this is a find that has kind of crept through the times mm. uh, and appeared to us, mm. and that has kind of opened up from all different mm. kinds of sections that that we've been working mm. with. And for me, I just want to point out also that for, uh, for me, it's also been like a ritual act of caring for the end, like the, the death, basically. You know, that, you know, we're living in a time where uh, in, on one side, like we're surrounded by like the threat of, of death or end of life, especially in this time. Uh, but at the same time, uh, and it's been very like close, uh, close, like in my life. But in, at the same time, we are like r like manic squirrels, like cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. You know, death shouldn't be anywhere near us. So it's like it's like we're really working so hard to keep death at the at a safe distance. And in a way, archaeology and your work, uh, I I think maybe I find it like uh, I, I read it almost like a ritual act of caring for, uh, you know, you know the, the non-living, or like the ones that have, that are not here. But, you know, uh, we're, the ground we walk on, they're just like dead dinosaurs. You know, it's, 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 it, death is all around us, but it's like we don't want to, we definitely don't want to touch it. And for us, it's been very tactile. Yeah. You know, get it, mm. getting really close to, uh, yeah, then, yeah, caring for all that difficult matters. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just saw the film, it was the premiere, so it was the first time also that I saw the entire film. And uh, I, I really think it's a, a, it's a piece that, in, in a sense, is there to not be explained, so to speak. Mm. But uh, I can't help, uh, after hearing you now, to think of it as a very, very meditative type of situation. When you see it, you can kind of just relax into it and mm. and, and and be there without words. How do you feel about that? I, I mean, because you talk about death and the gooey and the leg that mm. won't follow. Uh, to, to me, it was very pleasant. Yeah. I mean, very sort of meditative. What how, is is this kind mm. for you a kind of meditation on this or yeah? But what, what is the film to you? I don't know yet, but I, it is a docu like in a way it's like a tr trying to capture a much bigger process, which has been this collaboration. Mm. Mm. And so um, uh, for me, when you say meditative, maybe that's when we talk about the hypnagogue or mm. like accessing the the non intellectual or other types of knowledge. Is maybe it's the same thing. So yes, absolutely. I feel, especially in the last part, obviously, like when you're finally back in the swamp, like <laughs> if I'm, you know, then then it's very, um, you know, you, you you don't really want to leave. But I, I thought it was just me, you know, because that's that's how I feel every time I'm there. I just I want to go back and dive into it once more and so on. Mm. But. <laughs> So what is the future for the project? I, I, I hear not only in between the lines, mm. I don't know how much you, you want to share, but this is kind of, I mean, the installation downstairs really has felt like a beginning of something. Yeah. It's this space that has um, been the starting point of mm. a lot of exciting things. Well, I can just mention some things. I'm not going to say too much, but uh, like uh, to mention something, I can say that like definitely me and Christina will keep on finding ways to work together yeah uh, we're brew we're brewing something <laughs> we're brewing something <laughs> yes. we can't really say everything but mm. what we can say is that uh, i'm also in dialogue with kulbar to try to find like maybe next chapter of this uh, uh, this exercises because i see it also like a series of bodily exercises and spells in a way that we have been trying out now for a, a year or two so now we want to maybe like uh, really try to um, look at it from a different way and like extract that and so yeah we're looking at uh, finding uh, n next chapter of this and uh, the what we know is that because this find is from Örebro uh, in two years there will be a separate exhibition in Örebro curated by Caroline Malmström uh, with an even greater focus on this particular archaeological find and site uh, from very many angles, so uh, it will. Uh, we're, we're just getting started. Mm. 
That's great news. <laughs> and uh, today uh, we don't only have this premiere of the film, it's also uh, the release of a new book on your art, Signa. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the contributing writers to this book is my colleague uh, Therese Schellner, who is also co-curator. We curated the show together. Other people who appear in the book are also here tonight. But uh, to round off, uh, the editor of the book, uh, Caroline Malmström, is here. And uh, I will invite you to say a few words about the book that will then be available here in the space. Um, I Which also, I mean, for example, Christina is one of the writers. Yes. So like, it's also a way to get to dig, dig deeper into this discourse. Yes. Mm. So I won't stop the talk yet, but uh, <laughs> we'll round off with that. And then I'll come back for a, a brief summary. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Carolyn Malmström, and I will shortly introduce this new beautiful book about seeing this work that we are releasing and celebrating tonight. <clears throat> uh, I first met Signe about 10 or 11 years ago uh, when we were working together um, in an exhibition. Uh, and I, I was really like teased and excited about her works and these hybrid bodies that were in her drawings and in, in her sculptures. So since then, we've had this conversation that's been ongoing about art and life and, well, most things, really. <laughs> um, and uh, we are also colleagues because together with Erik Rören, we run Artlab Gniesta, this self-organized space uh, located about one hour south of Stockholm. Um, but uh, the last couple of years, seeing this work has moved through this really interesting context, both uh, research-wise and exhibition-wise. So I suggested to Signe that we should collect these um, contexts or conversations that she's had with researchers and uh, academics and curators and uh, collect them in a book and to share them with the world, really. And I think that was maybe like two years ago now. Mm. So we've been working hard uh, with this uh, book that we call Trophy. Uh, that really digs uh, deeper into her practice and her work the last couple of years. Um, so I would like to thank everyone involved in this book. Uh, it has contributions by Axel Andersson, Bronwyn Bailey Charteris, uh, Uda Benke, Julia Björnberg, uh, Christina Fredengren, of course, Jonathan Habib Enqvist, um, Therese Schellner, who isn't here today, but who has co-curated the exhibition here, Kristina Sigens daughter, uh, but also by myself and Signe, of course. Mm. And uh, as copy editor, we had Liam Sprod, who did an amazing job with our English. Uh, and also the, this beautiful design is made by Lars Heie, a Norwegian designer. Um, and this book has made possible with the kind support of Accelerator, Ystad Konstmuseum, uh, Oslo Kunstförening and Längmanska Kulturfonden. Uh, so, we want to give you a special uh, offer tonight, so you can buy the book for 150 Swedish crowns here, it's at the entrance, and we'll hang around here today to uh, talk about it and celebrate it together with you. Yeah. Thank, so you. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. Uh, it's been lovely to uh, be here with you at this premiere, and... Uh, should any of you who are here in the space have questions or comments, we will be around. Mm. So we're going to stop the talk now in a few minutes, but uh, don't hesitate to approach those who you'd like to speak to or ask questions. Uh, we're open until 8 o'clock. Yes. Uh, you can buy drinks uh, in the restaurant and also the exhibition reopens now if you want to revisit the entire exhibition and see Signas and the other artists' works. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.